This is Nutrition During Pregnancy, Part 3. We finished Part 2 off with iron, and now we will be moving forward with um, healthy choices during pregnancy. Healthy food choices during pregnancy are important for both mother and baby. Practical and specific food suggestions are key. Helping clients understand the whys behind dietary suggestions is important and actually helps with compliance. You may provide the most spot-on helpful suggestions, but if they aren't practiced, nothing has been accomplished. Helping families understand that healthy eating is compatible with limited budgets is also important. Healthy eating patterns offer a stronger pathway to positive pregnancy outcomes and can include special diets like vegetarianism. Empowering women to eat well and take care of themselves and their families leads to future generational well-being. So here is our next test your knowledge slide. True or false? Folate's most well-known role is in the prevention of neural tube defects. True. Which of the nutrients below may be lacking in the diet of a vegetarian? So these four nutrients may be lacking in the diet of a vegetarian. Protein, vitamin B12, calcium, and iron. So in this next section, we'll be looking at a variety of prenatal nutrition considerations. We'll be taking a closer look at protein, healthy fats, whole grains, gluten, vegetarianism, eating disorders, breastfeeding during pregnancy, foods to limit or avoid, how culture plays a role in nutrition during pregnancy. We'll be also looking at alcohol, caffeine, allergenic foods, artificial sweeteners, supplements, additional risks, and socioeconomics. So let's start off with protein. Protein needs are higher during times of growth and development, like pregnancy. Quality sources of protein are key. In terms of recommendations, when choosing protein, better sources of protein include calcium-rich protein, that can be found from milk, cheese, and yogurt. Not only are dairy foods like milk, cheese, and yogurt excellent sources of protein, but they also contain valuable calcium, and many are fortified with vitamin D. Choose skim or low-fat dairy to keep bones and teeth strong, help prevent osteoporosis, but keep calories in check. Iron-rich protein found in lean meats, poultry, eggs, beans, and peanut butter is also important. Again, making quality choices making lean choices most of the time will help keep prenatal weight to a good level. Healthy fats. Polyunsaturated fats found mostly in vegetable oils help lower both blood cholesterol levels and triglyceride levels, especially when you substitute them for saturated fats. One type of polyunsaturated fat are the omega-3 fatty acids whose potential heart health benefits have justifiably received a lot of attention. Omega-3s are found in fatty fish like salmon, trout, catfish, mackerel, and others. The types found in fish, we'll call them DHA and EPA for the purposes of this course, seem to have the strongest health benefits and have powerful roles during pregnancy and lactation. Another form known as ALA is found in vegetable oils, flaxseed, walnuts or walnut oil, and dark leafy vegetables like spinach. So the different types of omega-3 fatty acids can be confusing. There are the fish oils, those contain DHA and EPA, and then there are the plant sources, which includes the ALA. ALA is converted into an omega-3 fatty acid in the body. For the purposes of this course, just keep in mind that studies have generally used fish oils as the source for omega-3 fatty acids. While plant sources with ALA may have some of the same benefits, less is known about them. For now, fish oils with DHA and EPA have the more established benefit. ALA is turned into DHA and EPA in the body. For omega-3s, you can find enriched milk and eggs and bread and breakfast bars. Check product labels to make sure. Fish does contain the most effective, longer chain type of omega-3s. The American Heart Association recommends eating two servings of fatty fish each week, a cautionary note, pregnant women and younger children should stay away from shark, swordfish, and king mackerel because these bigger species fish tend to present more of a risk due to their higher mercury levels. Plant sources of unsaturated fat are a good substitute for saturated or trans fat. 
However, they won't have the same effect as on cardiovascular disease as fatty fish will. And keep in mind that cooking style does matter. Frying up your trout is not exactly heart healthy. Other options like steaming, broiling, barbecuing, stir frying or sauteing, grilling, poaching, or baking with a little added fat should be the go-to method for healthy cooking techniques. So a monounsaturated fat is another one of the healthy fats. Um, monounsaturated fats are part of the Mediterranean diet and they're found in plant foods such as nuts, avocados, and vegetable oils. These are another um, good source of healthy fats. So all grains start life off as whole grains. In their natural state growing in the fields, whole grains are the entire seed of the plant. So this seed, also called a kernel, is made up of three edible parts, the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. And these are protected by an inedible husk that protects the kernel from assaults by sunlight, pests, water, as well as disease. A grain is considered to be a whole grain as long as all three original parts, the bran, the germ, and the endosperm, are present in the same proportions as when the grain was growing in the field. So constipation is a common complication during pregnancy, and fiber, found in whole grains along with other foods like fruits, veggies, beans, and legumes, can assist with alleviating that condition. Total dietary fiber intake should be 25 to 30 grams a day from food, not supplements. Currently, dietary fiber intakes among adults average about 15 grams a day, which is only about half of what's recommended. Fiber also plays a role in stabilizing blood glucose. When fiber's around, blood glucose tends to not rise quite as rapidly and stays a bit more stable. Choosing brown bread doesn't mean that you're necessarily choosing a whole wheat bread. Just like choosing a loaf of white bread doesn't mean that it's not whole wheat or not made with refined white flour. Finding whole grain breads requires reading the label and any bread labeled whole wheat must be made with 100% whole wheat flour. Also, even if bread labels advertise seven grain or multigrain, they aren't necessarily whole grain products. Again, check the nutrition facts panel, read the label to verify that whole wheat flour is listed as the first ingredient and find loaves made mostly with whole wheat or other whole grain flour. A family's cooking style can be modified to include more whole grains and boost the fiber content of meals pretty easily. Switching out brown rice or even half of brown rice um, for white rice is a great way to go. Having a vegetable stir fry or making a sandwich out of a whole wheat pita um, is a, again another way to load up on fiber. You can fortify mixed dishes with high fiber ingredients like adding bran or oatmeal to meatloaf. Children tend to be a little less receptive to either whole grain pasta or brown rice. One thing that you can always suggest is to try half and half. That way you kind of keep the original flavor and texture of these products, but you still add in a little bit more. And families can either um, continue making the changeover to all whole grains or um, all brown rice, or they can you know, keep doing half and half. Either way, they're still getting more fiber in their diets. So for snacking, it seems too good to be true, but you can believe it. Popcorn is a whole grain. So if you are looking to have a client increase their fiber, this is a good way to go. Popcorn has complex carbs and fiber. Three cups of popcorn is one serving. So you can have a lot of popcorn, a really substantial portion, uh, and it'll last you a while. And it's a really good source of fiber without adding a lot of calories. Some additional ways to increase your fiber intake, well you can begin with breakfast. You can choose a fiber rich, whole grain breakfast cereal, oatmeal, or toast. You can check the grams of fiber per serving. Uh, more fiber will keep you feeling fuller longer, which can help pregnant women slow their weight gain down if necessary. Choosing whole grains over refined items when selecting breads, um, hamburger or hot dog buns, bagels, tortillas, pastas, and other grains is important. Another way to increase fiber, um, is to choose whole grains over refined. So when selecting breads, um, hamburger buns, bagels, tortillas, pastas, and other grains, make sure that you choose whole grains. So to increase your whole wheat, another way to go is to experiment with different grains. You can try buckwheat, bulgur, millet, quinoa, sorghum, whole rye, uh, and even barley. These are all excellent sources of fiber. There are other new whole grains that in the U.S. for the mainstream population we're just not as familiar with, but these ancient grains 
um, are becoming more widely available and they can be a really good choice to get more complex carbs in your diet. Although sometimes these may cost a bit more. Popcorn is an excellent snack. Remember three cups of whole grain air pop popcorn um, is only about 95 calories, but you're getting um, almost 10% of the fiber that you need during the day. To get more whole wheat in your diet, there's also 100% whole wheat or rye crackers. Um, beans and lentils are also an excellent source of fiber. Uh, whether you choose kidney, white, black, pinto, garbanzo, um, beans have a lot of fiber. And while you're on that aisle in the grocery store, think about picking up some lentils or even split peas as another way to add even more complex carbs into your diet. I've mentioned this earlier, but pasta has some delicious whole wheat varieties. And if kids are picky, a combination of you know regular pasta and whole wheat pasta is one way to go. Think half and half in a variety of ways, not just pasta. So even with a sandwich, if one slice of bread is a white bread and the other is a whole wheat, that's still better than two slices of white. And with cereals, you can also mix cereals together as well. Even having one of their familiar cereals mixed in with a whole grain cereal is a way to go. A very prevalent and widespread diet trend is to be gluten-free. Um, gluten is a protein found in many grains and it just provides structure. Um, gluten is found in wheat, rye, barley, bulgur, farro, kamut, spelt, and even um, triticol. So who really needs to go gluten-free? Well, anyone with celiac disease, which is a disorder of malabsorption, also, someone who is gluten sensitive, which is a condition that doctors once dismissed, but now acknowledge as authentic. Before someone follows a gluten-free diet though, the first step is to be tested for celiac disease. If someone legitimately reacts poorly to gluten with symptoms such as diarrhea, um, stomach upset, abdominal pain and bloating, they need to see a doctor to be tested for celiac disease. With celiac disease, when gluten is consumed, the lining of the small intestine actually becomes inflamed and can become damaged. That makes it harder for the body to absorb nutrients along with causing severe discomfort. The damage and the lack of nutrient absorption can lead to malnutrition and weight loss. An estimated 2 million individuals have celiac disease, meaning there are breastfeeding moms out there following this diet. Many others believe they have gluten sensitivity and have been successful at eliminating it from their diets with positive outcomes. It is easier now to be gluten-free, although reading labels and being educated is essential. People on a gluten-free diet or people who are responsible for a gluten-free diet for their family need to have a sharp eye. Some ingredient red flags are obvious like wheat, wheat gluten, barley, or rye. Keep in mind some foods have stealth or hidden gluten. Two terms to watch for are malt, which means it's made from barley, and hydrolyzed vegetable protein, which often contains wheat. And while oats do not contain gluten, they may also increase symptoms, including abdominal pain, bloating, and diarrhea. Again, in these situations, um, an RDN consult is preferred. Simply because pregnant women with undiagnosed or untreated celiac disease are at increased risk for spontaneous abortion, miscarriage, low birth weight, small for gestational age babies, stillbirth, and other pregnancy-related complications. While compliance with a gluten-free diet results in outcomes similar to those that don't need to be gluten-free. Careful planning is essential because a gluten-free diet may be low in carbohydrates, iron, folic acid, niacin, calcium, phosphorus, zinc, and fiber. RDNs may recommend whole or enriched gluten-free grains and products such as brown rice, wild rice, buckwheat, quinoa, amaranth, millet, or sorghum. Women who are newly diagnosed or unaccustomed to high fiber diets should introduce these foods gradually to their diet. If the usual dietary intake is nutritionally inadequate and cannot be improved through eating habits, then a daily gluten-free prenatal multivitamin and mineral supplement should be recommended. When it comes to gluten, it's not just about avoiding bread, although that would be one of the first items to cross off a shopping list, unless it's gluten-free bread. Perhaps the most difficult step in a gluten-free diet is bidding farewell to bread, including white, wheat, marble, and rye. Also off-limits are bagels, muffins, croissants, hamburger buns, hot dog buns, scones, 
and even pizza. There are alternatives, and more are appearing on the market every day. People do have gluten-free bread choices. Many health food stores and major supermarkets now carry a wide range of gluten-free products, including an assortment of breads. These are often made with rice or potato flour instead of wheat products. Just check the label to make sure that it says 100% gluten-free. Traditional breakfast cereals are another casualty for people on a gluten-free diet. Cream of wheat is obviously out, but so are many other favorites. Cheerios contains wheat starch, while Frosted Flakes uses malt flavoring. Again, read the list of ingredients and avoid any cereal containing wheat, barley, rye, or malt. Corn and rice-based cereals are good breakfast alternatives, but it's crucial to read labels carefully as many contain malt. Again, check your supermarket's health foods section for gluten-free products. One thing to keep in mind is that a stroll down the gluten-free aisle at the local supermarket can quickly destroy a weekly food budget. For example, most pasta is made out of wheat, so you'll need to avoid regular spaghetti, including macaroni, shells, all of the pastas when you're on a gluten-free diet. There are different pastas available that are made from rice, corn, quinoa, even some pastas that are made from um, different um, beans and legumes. You can say hi to filling and very flexible rice and potatoes because those are gluten-free. Rice and potatoes are not only gluten-free, but they're an excellent choice because they are very budget-friendly as well. If someone is really mourning the loss of pasta, here's a secret. Just think of rice noodles. They're a good substitute for wheat pasta. Other considerations? Well, keep in mind that breaded foods and even crackers um, may contain gluten as well. It, again, it's important to read the label. Even traditional celebratory foods like cakes, pies, cookies, and other treats, if they contain gluten, need to be avoided. Unfortunately for fans of the six-pack, most beers are made with barley malt. There are some gluten-free beers. However, keep in mind that this is the lecture on nutrition during pregnancy, so no amount of alcohol is recommended during this time. So for a gluten-free diet, there are a lot of delicious foods to enjoy, such as eggs, fish, lean meats, fruits, veggies, and lean milk products. Even if you're using frozen or canned fruits and vegetables, check for additives that may contain gluten. The same goes for processed cheese spreads and flavored yogurts. Eating out is a whole nother issue. And again, working closely with an RDN or a degree nutritionist can really help individuals navigate this health condition. Foods recommended for those following a gluten-free diet are similar to healthful foods suggested for the general population. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, low-fat dairy, eggs, plant-based proteins such as beans, nuts, and seeds, fish, and lean cuts of poultry and meat are important. The only difference for those following a gluten-free diet is that they need to steer clear of wheat, rye, and barley when making their choices. Focusing on naturally gluten-free foods and limiting highly processed specialty items is the key to healthful and cost-effective meal planning. For meal planning, make gluten-free versions of convenience foods, including breads, baked goods, sauces, dressings, and soups. Cook in large quantities and refrigerator freeze until needed. Save specialty gluten-free items for true convenience needs and special occasions. When possible, buy in bulk. You can plan gluten-free meals for the entire family and avoid purchasing both regular and gluten-free versions of the same foods. You can also check out your local supermarket to see if they have a registered dietitian nutritionist. Oftentimes, if they have one on staff or one that does grocery store tours on occasion, they can help you share gluten-free recipes and steer you toward more inexpensive purchases. So the bottom line for clients that are gluten-free with a few tips and some planning, it is possible to prepare healthful, gluten-free meals without breaking the bank. So testing your knowledge. A prenatal client tells you her doctor mentioned that her lab values indicated she has iron deficiency anemia. What suggestions can you offer to help increase iron absorption? So specific examples working with her current eating patterns to increase iron from animal sources, uh, such as beef, chicken, fish, pork, turkey, and eggs, 
She can increase sources from plants, um, such as beans, legumes, spinach, nuts, peanut butter. And keep in mind that combinations of vitamin C and iron-rich foods are important. Things like spaghetti paired with meat sauce, carne asada and salsa, or an omelet with vitamin C rich veggies. She should watch her calcium intake and make sure that it's not excessive. And she can also uh, look to take a prenatal supplement. What recommendations would you give if a woman did not want to use prenatal supplements? Eating more food to meet energy needs and the increased absorption of nutrients that occurs during pregnancy are usually enough to meet the needs for most nutrients when good food choices are made. However, vitamin and mineral supplementation is routine and supplementation helps cover those nutrition gaps. Many women consume less than the recommended amounts of calcium, magnesium, zinc, vitamin B6, and folate. It is important to emphasize that vitamin and mineral supplements cannot replace a healthy diet. Going vegetarian can be delicious. There is plenty of variety. As I'm sure you know, vegetarians do not eat meat, fish, or poultry. Most vegetarians receive their protein from dairy, legumes, nuts, and carbohydrates. There are different types of vegetarians. We've mentioned a few of these in previous slides. A vegan enjoys plant sources only. A lacto-vegetarian is a vegetarian that would include milk and milk products like cheese, yogurt, or ice cream in their diet. An ovo-vegetarian would include eggs. And someone that is a lacto-ovo-vegetarian would include milk products and eggs. A fruititarian would include fruits, nuts, olive oil, and honey. So the choice to be vegetarian can be due to many, many reasons. Culture, health, economics, the environment, and other philosophical values can all be different reasons for choosing this eating style. Going light on meat was the norm a few generations ago, when meat often was consumed in current side dish portions, while nutrient-rich beans and lentils, vegetables and whole grains took center stage. Vegetarians that include certain animal products such as milk or eggs can easily provide the nutrients needed for pregnancy and breastfeeding, and the majority of the planet consumes this type of diet. A balanced vegetarian diet can be healthy and provide additional benefits such as decreasing the likelihood of excess weight gain due to fewer calories and fat. Constipation, a common side effect of pregnancy, can also be reduced due to the extra fiber found in vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. The difficulty arises when a vegetarian does not manage her diet well. Well, I have found that most vegetarians are comfortable and knowledgeable about obtaining a balanced diet with adequate protein. Highly restrictive vegetarians or those following other strict regimes may benefit from an RDN and should keep their health care provider informed of her decision. If a woman is not consuming vitamin D fortified milk or dairy products, and she has little sun exposure, she may be at risk for a vitamin D deficiency. Most supplements will assist with obtaining the necessary amount. There are five specific nutrients that vegetarians need to be careful of. Protein, vitamin B12, vitamin D, calcium, and iron. So for protein, women need to seek out protein from legumes, beans, carbohydrates, as well as nuts and seeds. If they do include dairy and eggs in their diet, that does make things a little easier. However, it is certainly feasible to be vegan and still obtain adequate protein. If a woman is not consuming vitamin D fortified milk or dairy products and she has little sun exposure, she may be at risk for vitamin D deficiency. And so that would be a situation where a supplement would be recommended. Another nutrient to look out for is vitamin B12. In the situation of a strict vegan or someone else who is following a fairly restrictive diet, again, a referral to an RDN or a degree nutritionist um, might be something that is important so that someone can really go through and examine her diet carefully and make sure that she is obtaining enough of these nutrients. So let's spend a little bit of time talking specifically about vitamin B12. Um, as you'll remember, vitamin B12 is a water-soluble vitamin that's naturally present in some foods and added to others, and it's also available as a dietary supplement and a prescription medication. 
Um, to review, vitamin B12 is required for proper red blood cell formation, neurological function, and DNA synthesis. So as you can see from the description, vitamin B12 is a pretty important nutrient. You don't want a deficiency in any nutrient, but this is definitely one that you do not want a deficiency in. Strict vegetarians and vegans are at much greater risk than lacto-ovo vegetarians and non-vegetarians of developing vitamin B12 deficiency just because their natural food sources of vitamin B12 are pretty limited to animal foods. Fortified breakfast cereals are one of the few sources of vitamin B12 from plants and can be used as a dietary source of vitamin B for strict vegetarians and vegans. Vitamin B12 as a water-soluble vitamin does cross the placenta during pregnancy and is present in breast milk. Undetected and untreated vitamin B12 deficiency in infants can result in severe and permanent neurological damage. The American Dietetic Association recommends supplemental vitamin B12 for vegans and lacto-ova vegetarians both during pregnancy and lactation in order to ensure that enough vitamin B12 is transferred to the fetus and infant. Pregnant and lactating women who follow strict vegetarian or vegan diets should consult with a pediatrician regarding vitamin B12 supplements for their infants and children. So this slide was included just to highlight that vitamin B12 is really um, exclusively found in animal sources. So this is what a sample menu might look like for a teen lacto-ova vegetarian. Remember that teens less than four years from um, Menarche have additional calorie and protein needs themselves. In the situation of a teen and in the situation of um, especially a teen vegetarian, I would ref refer them to a registered dietitian nutritionist just to make sure that she is um, covering all her bases nutritionally. So that concludes um, part three for nutrition during pregnancy. And we left off with discussing, um, you know, teen vegetarianism. And we will begin part four with um, eating disorders.